We've all seen the occasional child playing football accidentally run the wrong way on the fields, and if you watch enough t-ball, you might even occasionally see a kid run the wrong way on the base paths. It turns out that there was once a Major League Baseball player who did this, only he did it on purpose. That man was Hermann Germany Schaefer, who also had other nicknames given to him, such as Dutch and the Prince. Schaefer was a notorious prankster in baseball who would do things like wear raincoats or carry a lantern out onto the field during the game, trying to hint to the umpire that they should call the game because of rain or darkness. One of his more memorable antics was to steal first base from second, possibly twice, though there is no documented proof of the first instance, just a story from a fellow player, Davy Jones. Schaefer is the only known person to ever steal first in a major league game and will remain so, because probably due to Schaefer, a new rule was already written shortly after his death at the age of 42 in 1919 from a brain hemorrhage and complications due to tuberculosis. Rule 52 Section 2, which is now Rule 7.08i, reads, After he has acquired legal possession of a base, if he runs the bases in reverse order for the purpose of confusing the defense or making a travesty of the game, the umpire shall immediately call time and declare the runner out. The first supposed instance of Schaefer stealing first, according to Davy Jones, occurred in a game against Cleveland around 1908, with the exact date being unknown. With a runner on third late in the game, Schaefer stole second, hoping to draw a throw from the catcher so that the runner on third, Davy Jones, could try to steal home. Jones gave the following account of what happened next in The Glory of Their Times by Larry Ritter. So now we had men on second and third. Well, on the next pitch, Schaefer yelled, Let's try it again! And with a blood-curdling shout, he took off like a wild Indian back to first base and dove in headfirst in a cloud of dust. He figured the catcher might throw to first, since he evidently wouldn't throw to seconds, and then I would come home same as before. But nothing happened. Nothing at all. Everybody just stood there and watched Schaefer with their mouths open, not knowing what the devil was going on. The umpires were just as confused as everybody else. However, it turned out that at the time there wasn't any rule against a guy going from second back to first if that's the way he wanted to play baseball, so they had to let it stand. So there we were, back where we started with Schaefer on first and me on third, and on the next pitch, darned if he didn't let out another war whoop and take off again for second base. By this time, the Cleveland catcher evidently had enough because he finally threw to second to get Schaefer, and when he did, I took off for home and both of us were safe. On August 4, 1911, Schaefer, playing for the Washington Senators, pulled the same stunt with less success, but at least this time it was documented in the newspapers. In this instance, it was the bottom of the ninth, with a similar situation as previously mentioned. There was a runner, Clyde Milan, on third, who represented the winning run of the game. It was tied nil-nil. Schaefer was on first. Schaefer broke for second and made it, but this failed to elicit a throw from White Sox catcher Fred Payne, as you might expect in the bottom of the ninth in a nil-nil tie where a runner on second is meaningless to the outcome of the game when there is already a runner on third. On the very next pitch, Schaefer stole first, again without drawing a throw. This brought the skipper of the White Sox, Hugh Duffy, out to argue with the umpires about allowing Schaefer to do this. While Duffy was still arguing with umpire Tommy Colony, Schaefer broke for second, this time getting caught in a rundown, at which point Milan tried to steal home but was thrown out, ending the inning. Not to be dissuaded, Schaefer argued with the umpire that this should not have counted because at the time of play, the White Sox had 10 team members on the field, though of course Hugh Duffy hadn't played a game since 1908. The umpires did not listen to his arguments and ruled that the play stood, as did his steal from second to first base, because at the time there was no rule against it. The Senators went on to win the game, 1-0 anyway. Now for some bonus facts. Besides using raincoats to get games called because of rain, Schaefer was also known to occasionally wear galoshes and sometimes to also bring an umbrella out. On at least one instance, he even went up to bat as if he was going to use the umbrella as a bat. One of the instances where he wore a raincoat, it actually got him ejected from the game. Another antic that got him ejected once was wearing an extremely fake bushy black moustache up to bat. Generally, though, umpires gave Schaefer a lot of rope before they'd eject him, as reported in Sporting Life in 1912, where it read, Schaefer is such a hit with the crowds that the umpires are giving him every liberty to do as he pleases. In another instance, after hitting a home run out of Columbia, 
Columbia Park in Philadelphia, Schaefer chose to carry his bat around the bases with him, acting as if it was a gun and that he was shooting Pitcheru Waddle with it. And now for another bonus fact. On June the 24th, 1906, Schaefer supposedly called his shot, again a story from Davy Jones, but at least this time it can be verified that Schaefer did hit the home run. With the Tigers down by one run and two outs in the ninth, Schaefer supposedly yelled, Ladies and gentlemen, you are now looking at Herman Schaefer, better known as Herman the Great, acknowledged by one and all to be the greatest pitch hitter in the world. I am now going to hit the ball into the left field bleachers. Thank you. It was quite a claim from a player who, at that point, had only got two home runs in his entire career. Schaefer then hit the first pitch off Doc White into the left field bleachers. Rather than just trot around the bases, Schaefer made diving headfirst slides into each base. This was all recorded in newspapers of the day. Davy Jones went on to say that after getting up from each base, Schaefer had called out his progress as if he was in a horse race, though few in the audience heard him. At the half, Schaefer leads by a length. Schaefer leads by a mile. Schaefer wins by a nose. Jones said that after diving into home, Schaefer stood up and called out, Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes this afternoon's performance. I thank you for your kind attention. This sort of thing it wasn't rare for Schaefer, who liked to tell people he was psychic and would often try to predict what was about to happen on the field. Most of the time he was wrong, but of course, as the late great Hall of Fame baseball announcer Dave Nyhouse used to say, nobody remembers these times, they only remember when you're right. And now for another bonus fact. Off the field, Schaefer was as much of a joker as he was on it. As recalled by Ty Cobb, Schaefer used to hold running conversations with strangers on the street. He would walk past them and start conversing, and at the end of this, as they got further away from each other, the stranger and him would end up screaming at the top of their lungs in order to just hear each other. Trying to be polite, most people would continue on with the conversation until this happened. As Cobb stated at the end, all street traffic would have stopped to listen open-mouthed to the dialogue, and Germany never considered the stunt a complete success unless he had the mother screeching answers when we were half a block away. And now for another bonus fact. In another off-the-field antic, this one in October of 1914, Schaefer randomly showed up in court to defend some homeless drunkards who were to be charged that day. His principal argument was that these poor souls should not be sentenced to 30 days in jail for an offense that a millionaire would be sent home in a cab for. The judge sided with Schaefer and let the drunkards go. Schaefer then took them all out to dinner. And now for another bonus fact about what he'd do after retiring from baseball, which he never got the chance to do because of his early death while still a scout, Schaefer once said in an interview that he'd like to buy a saloon. Not a big gaudy place, but a cozy spot where my friends can enjoy a glass of beer and a sociable evening. And along about 10 o'clock every evening, I want one of my pals to say to the bartender on duty, where's old Schaefer tonight? And I want my bartender to be able to say, he's upstairs, drunk. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. If you're looking for more stuff from me, why not check out another channel I do called Biographics. You'll find a link to that in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.